All right, good afternoon and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's live Q&A, Disaster Recovery for SAP on Microsoft Azure. I'm Kristen Tanner, Global Marketing Strategist for Proterra Technologies, and I'll be hosting today's webinar. We appreciate all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to attend today's informational session and interactive webinar. We hope to answer all of your technical disaster recovery questions for Azure Solutions for SAP. We will be getting started shortly, but I wanted to go through a few housekeeping notes. Only our presenters' phones are live. Your microphones have been muted by default to block any background noise. At the conclusion of the presentation, we will be taking your questions live via the Q&A function located in your webinar sidebar. And just a reminder, this webinar will be recorded and a link will be made available to all attendees after today's session. So now I would like to introduce today's presenter, Patrick Osterhaus, Chief Technology Officer for Proterra Technologies. Thanks, Kristen, for the warm welcome. And as Kristen mentioned, I'm Patrick Ostraus, Chief Technology Officer of Proterra Technologies. We'll go through this content here today. Uh, we're talking about DR specifically for Azure, and we're gonna go through a little intro on Proterra and our background experience with working with Azure and with DR solutions for SAP. And then we'll take a more deep dive into Azure DR specifically on SAP. We're going to look at a use case and the advantages uh, this customer has captured from using Azure as a target for the disaster recovery for their SAP production system. And then we're going to open up a, a, a lengthy Q&A session. So hopefully we can get a little more deep dive into some more of the technical questions or any, any survey questions you have around uh, DR in general going to the cloud and specifically around Azure. And then lastly, we'll provide a uh, a free offering for participants in this call today to do a free migration assessment on FlexBridge and we'll do a quick overview of what that offering provides. So a little bit about Proterra. We were founded in 1998. Our headquarters is in Chicago, Illinois, and our mission is to provide ITO services as a platform and to empower solutions for companies using SAP and to leverage all the innovation IT has and it's, it's uh, with cloud offerings and automation and with SAP and memory uh, HANA solution to provide the best innovative solutions to our customers. We do this through what we call our Proterra AppCare platform. And within this platform, it's not only the cloud offering, which is the IAS portion and the platform as a service, but all the other management it takes to run the SAP systems to fully monitor them, do capacity management, all help desk functions, which are provided 24 seven in multiple regions around the world. And within doing this with an ITIL framework, which is fully certified by SAP and our partners, including Microsoft and Suzy, which uh, we recommend for the operating system for HANA systems. So we'll talk a little bit more about the, the AppCare platform in detail, as well as about the, the delivery platform with the cloud brokering services we provide. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in the next slide here. So when we connect to an on-premise data center, we can make a cloud system appear like it's in the same network. And we can do this where the company has no visibility or uh, awareness that there's any deficiencies in having a hybrid solution for those systems that aren't at their location. Uh, we've been doing this for over five years with the, the cloud offerings, and, and we, we'll have some slides where we can talk about some good starting points for companies where they can put their offerings and you know, SAP systems into the public cloud. We'll talk a little more about that in detail um, in the next few slides, but here we're, we're going to focus on the, the aspects of the cloud offering itself. So within the IAS structure, you know, we're, we're going to provide the, the network in the the storage and the compute. On top of that, we will provide all of these areas to fully administer your solutions. So again, it's abstracted from the customer so they don't have to worry about how to provision systems, how to enter network uh, on-premise system to cloud. We take care of all that. And then we'll also take advantage of our innovation um, automation and monitoring solutions to make sure that we're doing the best operating system and database administration, as well as on top of that, any application support. So you can see on the right side, we we support all the SAP product offerings, as well as Microsoft products, including the Dynamics, Active Directory, the SharePoint, and the 365 products. So again, one cohesive platform, we can provide 
our world-class service 24 seven and provide uh, all of our processes over all these solutions. This slide talks to our ITO services platform and, and the aspect of combining this with cloud and these new innovations over the last few years of what Azure has provided with the flexibility where we can have a full support from SAP solutions and they run on Azure. So HANA or if it's ECC, we can quickly and talk to the scalability and agility aspects, we can quickly build these systems up and have the flexibility of moving them from, from on-premise to cloud. And as SAP builds new products, they'll be fully supported in Azure. So we have that flexibility of multiple apps and the choice of enterprise software can be put to Azure. And then also the security is always built in mind as a solution design. And obviously the data center protection that Azure has as part of their cloud platform and their certifications they bring to bear on that, it's built into the solution. And lastly, and we'll see this as an important part for all decisions is the efficiency and reducing the cost and complexity of, of SAP and, and running that for companies. And, and you'll see that here in the next few slides in the DR uh, solutions of how we do this. Before we get into the DR discussion, I'd like to just give a little historical background of how we got here. And in 1998, we started as a professional services firm. We did that for the first 10 years. So we really understood the needs of SAP customers and the challenges they have with upgrades and migrations and, and keeping current with the new solutions that SAP provides. So we were there from the beginning with doing design for sizing the system, doing proof of concepts of, of new technologies, and then also with the deployment of it. So this includes the implementation, those migrations and testing of it. And then the operation side where once the system goes live, we have our app care solution or AMS services that provide end-to-end -end support and optimization of those systems. So we're very used to seeing the full life cycle of solutions and deployment once they go live into these more advanced topics like the HA and, and DR scenarios, which uh, we'll talk to momentarily. So we've talked about the Proterra app care. That's the platform on the upper right. On the upper left, we'll, we'll talk at the end of this deck around the FlexBridge offering, which we have separate webinars that talk to how we do migrations and how we can best capture value for a customer with doing a migration to Han in the cloud. And we have an offering that's based just around that. And then lastly, as I mentioned, when we started in 1998, we, we started with professional services. So we, we can do some of those complicated uh, professional services engagements for the hardest uh, projects. We still do those. So why DR? In this slide, we'll talk about the features. Um, and this gets into cloud adoption and for SAP specifically, the good use cases for, for the cloud. And back in you know, 2008, 2009, when we started seeing uh, the cloud offerings being available, for enterprises, we, we quickly saw that this is an opportunity for companies to capture the value of cloud because A, they could start up a system just when they need it. They can run it at a minimal footprint for keeping the systems replicated. And then they can easily copy the system whenever it's needed to do testing. So we saw this as a perfect use case for DR on the cloud. So that's actually where we started our first uh, systems that we put in the cloud were exactly this. Um, the other huge advantage is that the geographic choice within Azure, the, the regions that are available around the world. So you have truly a, a great choice in if you're located in the West Coast going to East in the United States or vice versa, or if you're in Europe, you can, you can uh, spread your geographic zones over Europe uh, or even go to another continent. So there's a lot more choice than ever has been available. And so it gives uh, the business their options for a low cost, um, you know, low cost uh, option to do DR in a totally different geographic location, or even possibly have multiple uh, DR sites. So it's uh, it's been a great feature of the Zero Cloud, and uh, it's it's one of our biggest areas of interest for companies when they want to start using cloud. They start here, and they can understand uh, the resiliency and the, the advantages over on premise that this provides. And then lastly, and I think this is the big differentiator for Azure specifically, is around the, the platform as a service offering. And you'll see a little more on that in a couple slides. Uh, we, we have a little more description on this. So the use cases for Azure, 
you know, our, our most prominent use case, and, and you'll see uh, an example uh, later in the deck, is around on-premise to Azure. So again, this is a great place to start. Those companies that have data centers today, they can easily spin up a DR replicated site in Azure in multiple regions, and uh, they can do their replication to cloud and, and make their copies in that cloud uh, environment. So it's a, it's a very good place to start. We can also see, and, and we, we have interest from, from our partners and customers to do cloud. So if they're already in the cloud, just specifically, you know, if they're a VMware platform or AWS, they can actually replicate to Azure. So they have a completely different cloud that, um, you know, for geographic protection as well as uh, those technology differences, they, they can take advantage of uh, the Azure cloud for their DR. And lastly, this is an area that's coming in the future, the Azure to Azure and getting back into that platform as a service and those advantages, which I'll speak to right now. So the Azure Site Recovery, which is known as ASR, this provides a DR solution that's built into the Azure platform, and it works across, right now, Hyper-V, VMware, and physical. So those sources can all replicate to ASR. And what's nice about it is it can do this uh, from those sources, from, from it, be it physical or cloud, and it can provide a very low RTO, RPO, so very aggressive uh, commitments that can be provided to customers. So very exciting offering. Um, this is something worth looking at. So why do ASR as DR? Well, for one thing, it lowers the cost. It replicates in the storage in the compute while it's being synchronized. There is no charge for that. So obviously it's a big time, uh, well, it saves time, but more importantly, it saves the cost uh, with the synchronization. The other big thing is that it enables you to do non-disruptive DR tests. So in the past, if you're shipping tapes and you want to stand up your DR system, you'd recover it, you'd bring it up, and during that test time, your DR was broken. And with this technology of ASR, we can continue that synchronization and we'll quiesce the, the sync for a few seconds and then we'll snap a copy, we'll create a, a copy of that system where the test can be performed. So the whole time the test is being performed, which could be multiple weeks for a team to get in and test the full you know, system and all of its business processes, um, you'll have DR in your company fully protected at that time. So it's a, it's a significant improvement over old DR, like a CDR you could say. It's a key benefit here with ASR. And then the resiliency and the redundancy. So just, you know, the big advantage is the cloud that you're not, you're not replicating to one server and you have the same, you know, single point of failure in one piece of hardware and all of its components. It's resilient that you're going to storage, which is replicated into multiple data centers. And it's redundant in that if this compute would go down, you just start up another compute instance, being there's thousands of servers, in these data centers, and uh, you're protected. So you got to make sure that, you know, not only is your, production site protected and it's resilient, but more importantly, the DR site, because that's, that's the fail-safe system. So it's a great advantage to have this for, for DR. And lastly, it's the heterogeneous solution. So there, there is some operating system that aren't supported today with ASR, yet it's, it's, uh, it's quite lengthy what is supported, especially for SAP. So the fact that it can do Linux and can do Windows operating systems as well as multiple databases for SAP, that's a great benefit. So again, uh, you want more information, if, if, if this can work for your solution, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, Kristen will be sending out the contact information at the end of the, this webinar. So important keynote, uh, paramount to, to remember here is that when we do DR, and this is for SAP, we wanna make sure that that DR system is certified to run SAP on it, because DR is no good if you someday, um, you can't run prod on it, in a supportive manner. So these are all important features. These are all important considerations you have to look at to make sure you're up to snuff uh, for that DR system. So foremost, you have to have premier support for Microsoft. And this is a key benefit because this, this cost, this is a key benefit to do DR with Proterra because we are a premier support provider already. So this is a key piece that has to be part of the, the solution for it to be certified to run on Azure. And then these other three pieces are very technical in nature. This is around enabling the monitoring which SAP plugs into that is enabled in Azure. So those instances that are running in Azure, it allows monitoring by SAP to be done. There's also storage requirements for sizing, for how 
the networks are provisioned and how they're secured, which are very important. And lastly, the storage requirements. So there's, there's IOPS requirements, obviously, for performance that if it's HANA, it has to have this, uh, this requirements for IOPS and also for production um, business suite systems. So obviously, we want to make sure it's sized properly uh, if it's going to be used for production. So we wanted to talk here about our success story. This is Chromaflow. It's a Midwest company, and they have an ECC system that they were wishing to do DR for for many years, and that's where we thought of the idea of doing the DR on Azure for all the reasons that we just went through with the resiliency, the low cost, the ability to spin up and test whenever, whenever needed. So this slide talks a little bit about that spin up. So in six weeks, we designed it, we deployed the DR solution, and during that time, there was no production downtime. So the system was replicated from their production environment and there was no impact to the end user. So it was, uh, they really had no idea it was created until when we started uh, doing replication and we did testing over on that environment, they saw that that second copy that spun up was, was available. So again, low cost, um, credibly resilient, and they have protection now not only for their highly available production environment, but also with a, a different geographic location for DR. And a little bit about the, the solution here. Um, this solution actually doesn't have a dedicated connection between the data center, uh, their, their source data center, the, their customer environment, and the Azure cloud. They're actually all done through VPN site to sites. So uh, it's a low cost option even for the networking requirement. Uh, obviously it's secure, the VPN provides encryption, so all traffic is protected at, per SAP's requirements for production. But you can see here just uh, how the architecture, is pretty simple and low cost, so we provide that solution uh, for DR for Chromoflow. So what we wanna do now is open up our session here. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them in and I'll go through those as we see them. So feel free to hit the Q&A button there on the top of the Zoom toolbar there. And I'll start going through the ones I see, you know, as they pop in, I'll, I'll go through those. So the first one I see here is around, it says, how does Proterra's data, data recovery as a service work in, is the SLA based on data volume, recovery time, or other parameters? So the, the RTO, RPO, we have a standard on those timings, and those obviously can be adjusted to be more aggressive. So the, the SLA is based essentially around those, those two parameters, so RTO and RPO, how, how quick we can get the, the system back and how much data would be lost. Now I'll say we may have a few hours in those RTO, RPO. We've been able in test, uh, in, in be able to simulate those, those uh, SLAs being in minutes with the technology. So it is truly capable of doing some very aggressive SLAs on those two parameters for DR. So it's, it's very encouraging. Uh, another one coming in. Um, so we, we have SAP on premise. If we deploy DR systems in the cloud, how does the fallback from DR systems in the cloud to our data center work? So there's a couple options here. Um, when, when there's a, the DR event and you fail over to that target system, uh, we can synchronize that environment to build the production system as soon as it's available. Now, the issue is the timeline it takes. If it's a smaller network, it could take you know, a couple of days. If it's a larger system, it could even take a week to replicate. The key point here is that that replication is going to be done while the system's up. So, to do the failover, to go back to production, there will be a, a few minute outage. And we also have to work with the customer to do some networking changes to make sure it's pointed back to the right location. Yet it's, uh, you know, the replication, the, 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 the taking back DR back into production, uh, that's all done naturally uh, without, any, without any outage until we switch it over. So um, certainly can be done without a lot of headache. Okay, seeing the next question coming in. Um, so can Proterra DR support physical on-premise and virtual on the cloud SAP systems? So it's it certainly, you know, when we started doing DR into the cloud, it was only physical. Uh, so it, it's less important 
if it's uh, physical, you know, bare metal servers, or if it's virtualized, and even if it's even in the cloud. Now, there's some restrictions in ASR today of what that source can be. Uh, we, for those situations, we actually have our standard, our old standard, let's say it that way, for DR before there was ASR to be able to replicate the environment still. So there's, there's certainly choices for every SAP environment and combination of operating systems and databases to replicate DR into Azure. So rest assured that Azure can be a target no matter what the, what the, what the source are. Um, here's, here's one, it's, it's talking about is uh, the clouds, the DR systems in the cloud regionally isolated to protect against regional disasters, um, whether, whether events, for example, is communication latency an issue? So it's a good question. Um, it's, it's no longer, it's, I should say no longer, it's no more an issue than users being geographically, you know, if, you, if you're, you have the user that's on the East Coast and they usually access the West Coast, it's going to be the same latency cross country. And it's, I can't remember the, the, the exact numbers. It's maybe 40 milliseconds to hop across, you know, the network um, over the country. So it's not a big problem because SAP GUI, the way SAP is structured, its communication is extremely efficient. It's, it's compressed um, and it's, it's not a lot of traffic. So it, it's always a consideration if you're maybe going around the world, um, Asia Pacific, if the system's hosted in the United States, they're, they're going to have latency, um, which brings us up to another idea that, you know, now, now we have the cloud, maybe there's a better um, option for where that system is geographically located. Maybe if you have users in both Asia Pac and the United States, um, maybe maybe the system being in Europe is an option. Uh, we've seen companies do it. But short answer is communication latency is not a problem. Um, it's, not, it's not a design issue that keeps someone from doing it. We might have more thought where the most users located where we want to put that target DR system. Uh, here's another one. So does Proterra DR services install require agents to be installed in the production SAP systems? And, and the short answer there is no. Um, they're, they're, the way the replication is done is part of the platform. So that replication is done on, you know, with, within, it's uh, either the database synchronization, the, how we would do it through non-ASR uh, would be through the, the replication of operating system uh, files and systems and drives or we would do it through database uh, replication or combination. But short answer is we do not require agents to be installed on in, in the, the source systems uh, for that replication to occur. Just uh, reading a few new ones here. So is SAP, or I'm sorry, is Proteras DR solution SAP certified? Um, it most certainly is. So we, as that slide we had, um, it detailed, you know, the requirements on the support level. So you, the support being is there's an issue that SAP sees and they have to go into the stack. So the network or the operating system, SAP requires that uh, a Microsoft premier support contract exists for that, that system. So that's one qualification as well as how the systems are designed as well as it has to be on certified operating system and database, right? Which, which is what we, we help with, uh, you know, when we move systems to cloud, we will verify all this. So the, the DR solution is fully certified. If there's an event and you have to move to DR, you can you can uh, create tickets without any concern that that would be uh, not supported by SAP. Okay, here's, here's a long one. I'm gonna try to summarize it. So, uh, so the question's around key trends around how SAP customers approach DR and if we can, share information on how we see the SAP system, DR systems evolve. So, um, so I think, I think the questions around how DR has changed. So, um, I, I think one that, you know, I brought up in the, the conversation already is that the, the geographic choice. So every day Microsoft is providing new data centers and, 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 you know, throughout the year adding new regions to, the uh, Azure cloud. So it provides a lot more choice in targets, which before was very restricted. You know, a company would have, you know, a, a primary data center and then in another office, they would build a, a secondary data center and then they might put their non-prods in there just, you know, just, just so they're not always having um, hardware 
sit idle. So the, the fact that not only the cost is so much less, but you can spin these systems up anywhere and you can do tests at a moment's notice. I think that's, you know, the biggest, uh, biggest benefit we've seen in the last few years. Um, and I, I'd even say, you know, the replication, the tools of how DR happens is much more sophisticated where in the past, we, you know, we, we built our own tool set to do replication, as I mentioned on the storage level and in the database. And now that's, that's being done on the block level. So it's synchronization. You don't have to worry about consistency of the, of the application, the database. It's, it's, it's built into the solution. So the, the tool set that Microsoft has provided has become very, um, you know, very comprehensive in being a, a very proven, reliable DR technology. Okay. A couple more here as they came in. So the questions around the, the testing. So how, first of all, how do we, the process for DR testing, you know, if we can describe that a little bit. So, so from, from the Proter standpoint, when we see, per, uh, when we see the DR testing, it's, it's around the area of making, you know, quiescing the synchronization from that production system and bringing up a copy then from that target DR synchronization, synchronized system. From that, we can copy it, and then we can start up SAP. Now, there, there is some complexities around that. Um, and, and in short, we got to make sure that system's isolated because we might be bringing up, a, well, not might, the, the environment will be a like exact copy of production. So foremost, we have to make sure that there's no invoices being emailed out, no printing going out because it's real data. And, and so we got to make sure, first of all, that it's isolated. And there's also some complexities that could come in around Active Directory where the same system appears in the network and that causes issues. So point being is it's really important that there is design for being able to spin up these tests. So it's not just, you know, make a copy, start it, and, and you can test. There's some, some steps you have to do to, let's say, uh, safeguard that test environment. That's probably the best way to describe it. So... I, the onus is on us to build those processes and automate them so that we can very quickly build this environment for testing because we encourage companies to be able to test their DR four times a year. So, and it brings up another interesting idea and that's around using this test environment from DR as your copy of production. So a lot of companies, you know, have invested a lot of money. They bought very expensive SAN arrays and now they're going to cloud they can capture those same technologies that they spent millions of dollars on an expensive SAN array to, to do a copy of their system and synchronize prod to make the quality. You can do this same way to use DR as a synchronization method and then copy that, that sync system to build your copy of production. So the point being is that not only are you doing DR testing more often because you're using this as a copy of production, but you're able to get very fast copies of production without having this tremendous spend on, you know, sand technology on on-premise. So is a, there's a couple of huge benefits to be able to do that test, you know, like we say quarterly, if, if that's possible. And the other really nice benefit is with the DR testing, we've seen with companies where it gives them the choice now where they can have multiple tests. So they could have their HR group. They, they need that DR system for a couple of weeks to do all their testing and matter of fact, they want to do some testing of some support packages, you know, so they'll, they'll actually use that environment for even longer than two weeks. And if, if the SD team wanted to get in there and get a new copy of the system to test, you know, that environment with, we can just spin up another test environment. So the, the fact that it's the way that the cloud provides uh, an easy way to copy the systems and spin up multiple copies at the same time, it, it provides business choices that we didn't have, you know, for most companies because sand technology is extremely expensive and, and having a terabyte system, you know, on, on these, these systems wasn't uh, what wasn't a luxury most companies could afford. So it gives us a lot more choices. All right. I think the one last question that came in might be a duplicate. It was around the, the fail back um, option and that essentially we, we covered it, but I'll, I'll just say it again. So that fail back, um, it, we, we have, if there's a DR event from production, now we're on, on the DR system, there's some time that's gonna be needed to synchronize the DR copy, I'm sorry, the DR system, it's live, back to production. Now, 
it could be a, a few hours after DR happened. If if depends on the policies of the customer and how soon they declare DR. Yet, you know, this is probably more practically going to be a few days. If there was a real event that the, the production system was down for, you know, a natural event, it's probably going to be a few days before that environment gets rebuilt. But just like I said, this the, the production. Uh, workload is sized in that DR site, so it can stay in DR for as long as it needs to be. Um, there was actually one one last thought um, on that question that just came in that I wanted to share. You know, this we'll, we'll finish the, the Q and A unless another one pops in here in another minute. Um, and that's around when, when I mentioned about the DR testing. It's it's important to differentiate. There's responsibility that Proterra has in, in when we do the tests and the setup for that. But the other big part, which in my experience, in my opinion, which is often overlooked is the business continuity testing on the customer side. So in the customer audit, they'll oftentimes ask us, how does DR work? How do we do synchronization? How often is it kept to date? Blah, 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 what's the security, right? Those are all good things, they're good questions. Yet I've never been asked in an audit, you know, or maybe we just don't see it, maybe it's asked, but <laughs> is the business continuity aspect. So when DR occurs, how do you update all your networking, right? How do we notify the users that you were going to a new system? You know, all these other areas that are impacted. Does printing work? You know, now in this new location from the cloud, does all your network and your ports open so you can print to all your locations? And it's more often than not, the thing, we always have to, um, you know, readjust this with customers on DR especially. So it's, a, it's an area that's often overlooked or not often, it's always overlooked. And it's an area that, you know, business continuity is a key part to the DR testing. So I encourage you that, you know, when you set up these systems to, to look at that, that's a, that's a, a big lesson learned from, from our experience. Cool. I think we went through all the questions that went, came through so far. So looks we, like it. Yeah. So we can go to the next, next slide here. And, and I think we're second to last slide. So we're almost done. Um, what we want to offer for everyone, thanks for your time for, for showing up to this webinar, um, is an offering for a free assessment here to go to SAP HANA on Azure. So what we've built is a free assessment. This is, I think it's about 40 pages on average, which guides the customer on what is needed to go to HANA. So in the olden days, you know, what's still happening today in the market is you know, people go out for two to three weeks to do an assessment of a, a SAP environment, to see what it's going to take. We've built a tool set called FlexBridge to automate this collection piece foremost. So we do the assessment. We, we look at the vitals of your environment with SAP. And from running this report, we will get a file that we consume. Now, this information that's in the report that we see is just the vitals. So there's no customer data. You know, we, we don't look at, you know, your company code structure. We don't look at any of your financials. It's just looking at the heart, you know, the vitals, your, your blood pressure, your, your heart rate. <laughs> and it's looking at, you know, sizing information, what versions you have for OS, for your database, making sure you're compatible or, or if there's a remediation steps that have to be taken to go to HANA on the cloud. So we're considering all that. We provide you what we would expect to be a, a good estimate for a project plan and, and the approach. and also you see your real data. So you, you see, you know, your system, how it's sized and information about the items that have to be remediated before you go to HANA. So it's, um, it's, it's quite insightful. And I can say for one of the customers that just signed up from this report, they were able to determine, they made the decision because they were going to do first, they were going to do a cloud migration and then they were going to migrate to HANA or vice versa. That was up in the air, how they're going to do the order that, each respective project was going to be a year project. And through this report, through us talking about our approach, we were able to take those two one-year projects and put it into one project in six months. So encourage you to look at this. Um, happy to provide more information and uh, we can run a report for you. So Kristen's going to send out the links here after it so you don't have to worry about writing these down. You'll, you'll have the URL so you can follow up on them. Encourage you to attend our next upcoming webinars. Uh, these are ones that are coming up here in the next few weeks. So we'll be talking about a few other topics here on Azure. So appreciate your time if uh, you want to come back. And I think 
that is it. These are how you can find us on social media. Perfect. Today. Yeah, thank you so much, Patrick. And thank you to everyone who attended. Um, we really appreciate it. And if you have any other questions, um, reach out. We will be sending the recording um, along with the other links for the free assessment um, shortly. Thank you. Thanks again. Bye-bye.